First of all, I would like to acknowledge uh, the presence of all our invited guests that are here, the most important, the learners that are here. Um, we will be expecting few uh, learners that will come, but we cannot wait anymore, so we will just continue with the program. I know that uh, David Besaid notes uh, learners are still on their way, right? Let's not go back. Yeah, I saw some of them are on their way, but we will start with the program. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, I would just like to acknowledge our learners that are here. I would like to acknowledge the UNEM management, the staff that is here, our students, our exhibitors that are here from the different faculties and schools. Um, we will also introduce them later in the program and our partners from Namibian Media Holdings that is here, specifically the youth brand, My Zone. Um, thank you very much and also uh, we will be joined tomorrow by our corporate industries and most important, our learners again. Thank you very much for being here. And I believe that you're going to have, this is going to be something that you will go back and there's something that you, have, that you will take for yourself. So my name is Ms. Angela Naubes. And I am the career guidance coordinator at the University of Namibia uh, at main campus. And I will be your master of ceremony. Please give yourself a nice hand of applause. Thank you. Okay, we will start then our program with our, um, one of our learners from Jan Moore Secondary School, Mr. Romano, Romano Brangman. He is one of the Yalashis, and he was very brave to um, volunteer to be part of the program and to open this program with words of uh, encouragement, scripture reading, and prayer. Please give a hand of applause to <laughs> Mr. Brangman. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and my fellow peers. My name is Romano Brangman, LRC of 2023 at Yanmar Secondary School. It is a great honor and a privilege to be asked to open this wonderful event. So I'll be reading a scripture from Psalms 32, verse 8 to 9, that says as follow. I hear the Lord saying, I will stay close to you, instructing you and guiding you along the path for your life. I will advise you along the way and lead you forth with my eyes as your guide. So don't be, don't be, don't make it difficult. Don't be stubborn when I take you to a place that you have never been before. Don't make me tug you and pull you along. Just come with me. Basically, in my own understanding, as individuals, we tend to make wrong decisions, but when God speaks to you, telling you to go to the right path, we try and resist going in the path that God is trying to take us. So my encouragement to you guys is try and listen to the voice that God is setting upon in your heart and just follow the voice because he will be by your side no matter thick or thin, even in difficult times, even when you are trying to make difficult decisions. So let's just close our eyes and pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace. We just humble ourselves to you. We thank you for this day. We thank you that your hand is upon us. We thank you for each and every individual that is here. We pray right now, my Lord, for this event. Let it be successful. That no um, attacks from the enemy shall come. I pray in the name of the Father that each and every individual shall just receive wisdom and knowledge through this event. And I just pray for true guidance and, and clarity. In Jesus' name, I declare, amen. 
Thank you very much. Uh, one more hand of applause to our... Um, that's nice. Wow. <laughs> All right. Now, learners, who are we having here? We have Jan Moore. Is Jan Moore here? Okay. You look so tired. Or oh, you are afraid. Welcome, you are at the university, ne? In, in, in my language, we say junam, junamske, yes. <laughs> so, I will uh, ask our, um, one of our management from the, from the Comastal campus to do for us the official opening. Uh, that is Mr. Tony Hawanga that will just make us feel at home. So without further, I will call Mr. Tony, Tommy Hawanga to come on stage and to officially welcome all of us that are here. Please give a hand of applause to Mr. Tommy. Good morning. Are you scared or are you not feeling welcomed? Please don't be. Colleagues, learners, students, and all protocol observed by the previous speakers, if any. I am standing here to welcome you first to this prestigious number one university in the land of the brave, and two, to this exciting career open day event that the university has deliberately organized for the learners. We are delighted to have each and every one of you in our vibrant university. Today is all about you, learners. It's your day. Your dreams, your aspirations. Whether you have a clear idea of your career path or you are uncovering your patience only today, this event is designed to ignite your curiosity and empower you to make informed choices about your future. The ball is in your hand. I hope you are playing it to your advantage. So get ready and embark on this journey of aspiration, discovery, and inspiration, okay? Throughout the day, hopefully you will be here, all of you. You have the opportunity to connect, mingle with the different faculties that are present here. And uh, other professionals from the industries that will be here, engage them in thought-provoking discussions and gain variable insight into various career fields that you can take. I said the ball is in your hand. Our hope is that you will leave here feeling inspired, motivated, equipped with the knowledge that you need to take the next step toward 
a fulfilling and successful career. Let's hope. Remember, this is not just an event. It's a chance to dream big. Then as the ball is in your hands, play it to your advantage. To challenge yourself and to envision the incredible possibilities that lie ahead. Embrace this opportunity to explore new horizons, network with like-minded individual, and seize the moment to shape your own destiny. I hope you are listening and understand. So once more learners, let's embark on this exciting journey together. Open your mind, ask questions, and embrace the wealth of knowledge and experience that awaits you at those tables. So once more, Welcome to the University of Namibia, Komasdal Campus. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tommy. Please give him again a nice warm hand of applause for that message. Now, can we just all stand up? We, we were welcomed by Mr. Tomin, and uh, what, what I hear, what he was saying is that, and I want you to repeat after me. Are we together? I am. Oh, there's another school coming. You are welcome, please join us. Thank you very much. You can sit anywhere, even you can come this side. Okay, let's continue. I am wonderful. I have dreams. And I have choices. And it's my responsibility to ensure that my choices happen. Thank you very much. Please give yourself a nice hand of applause. You can have a seat. Welcome. We will just wait a few, just a second for the school to just come and sit. We have an exciting announcement, but I will do it after our leader, we will ask now Ms. Christine Mwalunga. She is the SRC Vice uh, President of the Comas Dal Campus to just share a word of encouragement with you. Please give a hand of applause to Christine. Christine also just introduce what you are studying. Okay, Director of Ceremony, Ms. Angela, our highly esteemed uh, campus administrator, Mr. Tommy Hawanga, staff members present, invited guests, Dear learners, a warm greeting to you all. Your presence here at Commerce Dow Campus is appreciated and valued. Uh, before you today is Christine Mwalonga, SRC Vice President of the Agrolius Commerce Dow Campus. And I'm also a final year student teacher majoring in mathematics and Oshuambo, grade four to seven. 
It's my heartfelt pleasure to address this distinguished gathering of individuals who possess a potential achievement also in the greatness of their lives. Today, I have the privilege to inspire and motivate you towards reaching heights of success. Through this speech, I am ignite the flames of passion within your souls, compelling you to accept challenges, cultivate resilience, and strive for excellence. Together, let us begin on transformational journey where we will unlock the boundless potential that resides within each and every one of us today. Firstly, in short, allow me to take you through my journey. Due to hasty decisions, I was enrolled as a first year student in 2019, which was at main campus. And the course I was enrolled in, I was not really passionate about it. Simply because I was desperate also just to be in university. Within four months of my studies, I decided to deregister because I didn't find the course interesting. So I waited for 2020 academic applications to open. So I apply. My love of the children made me to apply for primary education. My parents and peers were disappointed in me because they believed I was wasting time and money. In 2020, I got an admission into University of Namibia as a primary education student. Moral of the story is, patience is virtue, and it's one of the, my character that I possess. With that said, career choices in important aspect, I urge all the learners to move away from the common courses such as education and medicine, particularly nursing, and to dive into a career choices that you have passion for. When choosing a career, consult people around you, but do not make decisions based on the career they want them for you. But what do you want? Because you know yourself better. During decision making in the relation of career choice, it should be aligned to your personality. As I have just mentioned that I am patient, and to be a teacher, you have to be patient. You should choose a career also which will make you profound to achieve goals that are of importance to you. Furthermore, career choice is a major aspect that can have a positive and negative influence on future. As learners, it's important to know that the university is a cluster of opportunities and options and not just a place where dreams come to an end. The question you should ask yourself today is, what are your future plans? What career path you want to follow? It's very important for a learner to establish what you want to become and the steps to consider. The university needs you to explore its opportunities and it's a great place to discover your passion and find the career path for yourself. Pursuing a career in teaching caused me to end up in student leadership, which provides satisfaction and fulfillment through mentoring and guiding my fellow students to reach their common goals. My advice to you learners is to choose a career that will bring joy and fulfillment. Teaching is a rewarding profession, and I'm confident to say it's the right choice for me. I then encourage you to explore all the options and find the career that is right for you during this career fair. It all begins with you, so make a stand to put more effort and study to pass your grade 11 and grade 12 because the future awaits you. Optimism is a faith that leads to achievement because nothing can be done without hope and confidence. And lastly, I just would like to say, a career is your journey, 
and it's up to you to make it an adventure. Thank you for attentiveness. Wow, wow. Thank you very much, Ms. Christie. Please give Ms. Christie a nice hand of applause. Ms. Christie is the, she's the boss here. When it comes to the students, she's the, we can say the president for the, for the campus here. Uh, and, and we are so happy to see that when learners are coming from high school, they, they enter the university, they also take other opportunities, they grab those opportunities and they, they stand out uh, within the leadership uh, qualities that they have. So thank you very much, Christy. We will continue with our program if that is okay. And then we will have Ms. Josie in Pandua. <laughs> Pandua, student recruitment officer. Uh, she is gonna talk to you about career making. So please do give a round of applause to Ms. Josie. Thank you very much, Angela. Good morning, everyone. No, don't greet me like we have issues. Good morning, guys. Yes, please. So as Angela has indicated, my name is Josie Ipandwa, and I'm the student recruitment and RPL officer for the University of Namibia. I am, uh-uh, it's a bad No, 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 you, you just listen slow. Yeah, and that's, that's a big part of being in university. You must learn how to listen faster. I'm actually very excited to see Yanwar students here because I was at Yanwar. I finished my grade 12 there. Yes. But don't worry, David, per side note, you guys are also the bomb diggity, ne? Yeah. Good morning to all of you, to our colleagues, to the NMH team. Good morning as well. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we appreciate you guys taking time out to come here. It's very important, ne, this occasion that has been set. So my job here is really just to have an honest conversation with you guys about career making. So the way this works is you and I can't talk at the same time. Yeah, only one of us can speak. Thank you. This is a very important conversation. If you have a notebook or anything that you have to take notes, please do take it out. The information I'm going to give you is information that you will need coming next year. And a lot of the times we recognize that in schools, the teachers do not have these conversations with students. And then you end up making the wrong choices to st study and then it affects your life drastically. So it's important that you pay attention. I'm not going to take up a lot of your time, but the information I'm going to give you is necessary. The school up there, good morning, guys. Which school are you guys from? Sorry? Havana High School. Guys, let's give Havana High School a round of applause. Thank you for joining us. All right. So, okay, quiet down. Quiet down. First and foremost, what is a career? Who can tell me what a career is? Does anybody know? Yes. A career is a job. No. A career is not a job. Who can tell me what a career is? So basically, a career is an occupation that you undertake for a very big period of your life in which you have opportunities to progress. What does that tell us about a career? It means a career is not only a job that you choose, but a career is an occupation that you undertake in which it is you can make money for a significant period of time, but it's also an occupation that allows you to grow in that job. So when you are going to choose your career, the first thing that you must keep in mind is one, I must choose something that I can grow in. 
If you study, let's say, business administration and you get a job as a secretary, you don't want to remain a secretary for the rest of your life, do you? No. You want to be able to grow up and eventually one day be the boss of the company that you were once a secretary in. Are we together? So when you choose your career, think long term. We like to think very quickly because we must want to make money now. We want to be able to pay for Moet bottles in the club now. And we want to drive the VW Golf now. But that's not how it works. Because majority of the times when you start working, everybody has to start at the bottom unless you're going to work at your father's company. Now, if I were to ask you, how many of your fathers here have companies where you can work? Not a lot of us will lift our hands, boss. Hi, Chomi, good luck to you. But the point is, you have to have a realistic approach to choosing a career. So what I'm going to give you guys is just 10 pointers on how to choose the perfect career for yourself. The very first thing that you must do, and I want you to write down the first thing you must determine, what are your passions and your skills? And guys, alcohol does not count as a passion. Sex does not count as a passion. Friends do not count as a passion. When we talk about passions, we talk about things that you are really good at naturally. Things that you are excited to do even when there's no money involved. That's what we mean by your passions. And then when it comes to your skills, what are you good at doing physically? And here you must be honest with yourself. Because we all want to be fast like Usain Bolt, but we can't all run in the Olympics. Nah. We all want to be singers, but we don't all have great voices. We all want to be boiler makers, for instance, but we don't know how to do vocations properly. So you have to be honest about what it is you are good at. Why is it important that you know your passions and your skills? Because they will point you in which direction you must go when choosing the course that you want to study. Later on, I'm going to walk you through the various faculties that we have so you understand why you must know yourself and what it is you want to do before applying to UNAM. Because there are so many options. You will either end up ending in the wrong faculty or you will make a choice that doesn't really bring you alive, it doesn't excite you, and you will waste four years studying a course you will never ever use or for a degree you will never use. Then you'll have to start over again until one day you find yourself as a 50-year-old first-year student because you still can't make up your mind. And before you laugh, we have a lot of 50-year-old first-year students at UNAM, so it's possible. So after you've determined what your passions and your skills are, then you need to look at your personality. What kind of a person are you when it comes to other people? Are you a people's person? Are you a person who doesn't like other people? Do you like working with other people? Do you not? Do you know how to talk to other people? Do you not? For instance, if you are an introvert, if you are someone who doesn't really have a lot of social schools, you have no business becoming a teacher. Because being a teacher requires for you to talk to learners every day. If you're a person who has a more strict personality, you have no business working in a field that requires for you to be gentle or to be empathetic towards other people. For instance, either as a social worker or a psychologist. Know your personality. And your personality will then show you what your options are. After you work on your personality, then you must establish your goals. Do you guys have goals? Now, when it comes to your career, your goals cannot be 12-month goals. You know those, those leak stories we all tell each other every 31st of December? No, New Year's resolution, New Year, New Me. I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to lose 30 kgs. And then in February, wacky Wednesday, every Wednesday, and then it's 2024 and we're setting new New Year's resolutions without accomplishing the previous ones. That's not the approach that you take for your academic goals. When you set your academic goals, you must look far into the future and ask yourself, when I'm 30, 40, 50, where do I want to be? And if I want to be at a certain place, then that means the goals that I set up for myself must work me towards that deadline that I've set. You, each one of you should at least have three academic goals and use a five-year span because it takes more or less five years to get an honors degree for most people. Use five years and you say starting next year, 2024 to 2029, these are my three academic goals. Let me give you an example of academic goals. You can tell yourself, okay, in the next five years, I want to have an honors degree with one year working experience, for instance. 
Or another example of an academic goal is, in five years, I want to have shadowed or be mentored by someone in a specific field which will help me with my studies. Do you, do you get where I'm going? But this is not a group exercise also. It's an individual thing. You have to decide for yourself. Please don't make the mistake of these things that we do. You know, we have friendship circles. Oh, my friend is going to study education, so I'm also going to study education because friendship forever. It doesn't work like that. Because you may be good at being a teacher, but your friend is not. Make individual goals that serve you. Very important. Now we've set our goals. Now we have to look at our values. What are your values? What do you stand for? What drives your moral compass? What are the things that you are willing to do and not willing to do? For instance, if you are someone like me whose moral compass is, for the lack of a better word, is, is, is quite strict, where you just refuse to do certain things. For instance, I refuse to defend a rapist in a criminal case. It's just something that I, I, I don't ever see myself doing. But because nobody had this conversation that I'm having with you now, when I was in grade 12 in 2000, or in grade 12 in 2007, or eight, yo, it's a long time ago. Because nobody had that conversation with me, I ended up studying law. And now I have a law degree, but I'm never going to practice because I don't like how the legal fraternity works. If someone had this conversation with me, I would have chosen to study something else a long time ago. You understand what I mean? So don't make the mistake that I made. Having a law degree is wonderful. I enjoy knowing the things that I do. I enjoy being able to read contracts and read legal literature the way that I can understand it and dissect public policy and all of that. But is it really serving my occupation? No, it's not. Don't make that mistake. So determine your values. And determine what are you willing to do, what are you not willing to do, and that will then also give you an indication of where it is you need to go. So, so far, we've determined our passions and our skills. We've determined what type of personality we have. You've written down your goals. You've established your values. Now you need to look at your options. And this is a very important one. And by options, I don't only mean where to study, because that is, is, is you have quite a number of options. For most of us, being able to afford out to study outside of the country is, is not an option for us at the moment. So you look in Namibia and you say, okay, I want to do engineering. Which uh, institutions offer engineering? Okay, UNAM has engineering. Which other institution has engineering? NAST has engineering. Which other institution has engineering? NIPAMA. NIMT. NIMT has engineering. Okay, so now... But now you need to look at how many grade 12 students are we that are going to graduate grade 12 next year. We are, let's say, 24,000. NIMT, UNAM, NAST only have a combined space of, let's say, 5,000 students. So now you must also think to yourself, okay, if we have 24,000 students who are writing grade 12, out of the 24,000, realistically speaking, let's say 7,000 want to do um, engineering. There's only enough space in the country for 5,000 students. So my options are NIMT, NAST, UNAM, but even at these three institutions, I must study so hard that if they have to eliminate people off the list, I will not be eliminated. Do you now see the type of conversation you must have with yourself when discussing your options? So it just shouldn't be about, oh, I know where I'm going to study. Look where you're going to study, look at what space there is and your probability of being able to enter. Above and beyond that, also look at the subjects that you have. That's what having options or, or, or knowing your options also means. For instance, if you've done social sciences, in other words, you didn't do any physics, you didn't do any biology, you didn't do any chemistry, you can't study medicine, you can't study veterinary medicine, you can't do any of our sciences, you can't. And that's what it means to know what your options are. If you've studied sciences, you don't only have to do sciences. You have options in humanities with the media studies, the psychology, and so forth. You have options in law. You have options in education as well. So make sure that you know what your options are and you narrow them down so it's easier for you to decide when the time comes. 
Now we know what our options are. And let's say our options have led us to, I'm just going to say law because, well, that's my, that's my alma faculty. Now we need to consider what is my potential salary? What salary am I aiming for? And you have to be realistic. Ne? It's, it's a nice dream to have because you spent four years studying and now you want to start with a $30,000 salary. I'm going to burst your bubble for you immediately. It's not going to happen. It's very less likely to happen that you will start your very first job earning $30,000 a month. Just so you know, nje. Because we, we like to lie. You know, our parents and teachers like to lie to the kids. Oh, no, if you study, become a doctor, you're going to make $50,000 a month. I know doctors that are still taking taxis. Yes. I know lawyers that are still renting in backroom flats. I also know teachers that are driving Mercedes Benzes. I know nurses who live in mansions in hours bleak. What does that tell us? What you study does not automatically uh, result in you making a, a, a lot of money at the end of the day. You need to determine for yourself, if I'm studying medicine, what I'd like to make, let's say in 2030, is $50,000. Then you need to look at what are the steps I'm going to have to take to get there? In other words, now you need to go on the internet and Google potential salaries for doctors in Namibia. Uh, an intern, when you're doing your two years, because remember, and, and we like lying to ourselves about the processes also. Remember, after you graduate your six years of medicine, you still have to do your two years internship. Ne? Those two years internship, you are making close to nothing. You get free accommodation and transport wherever it is you're attached to and you can go anywhere between Kurenkuru and, and Karasberg. The ministry can decide to send you anywhere. In those two years, you are making nothing. You graduated already. You were in Safari, Gaduya, Mus, Igitur, but you're still not making money. After those two years, then you still need to get or to write your bar exam. Which means even though you wrote your exam and graduated, these two years that you were doing attachment, you need to write an exam with a medical board that proves that indeed we can trust you with people's lives. Then after you write the exam, that's when we now start calling you doctor. Those of you who go into to general practice where you have your own private practice, yes, the potential for you to make a lot of money is there. But now to start a practice, you also need startup and funding. Do you qualify for a loan? How can you qualify for a loan? You don't have a credit portfolio at the bank. So either you have parents that are going to help you take out a loan so you can start your practice and you pay your parents back. Or if you were a proactive person in university and you're working and saving, then maybe also, or there's a company that can decide to sponsor and back you or be, uh, invest in you and back you. If you now go and you're put at Katutura Hospital, ministry doesn't have that much money. Do you make a healthy salary? Yes, you can survive but you're not making $100,000 a month. Why am I mentioning this to you? So that when you choose your career, you're not in it just for the money because you're going to end up disappointed. The money is always the consequence of the work that you put in, the effort that you put in, the hours that you put in. That's what determines the amount of money you make, not what is written on your qualification when you go to safari. Are we together? With, with education, Yes, you can get an education degree, but after that, there are courses that you can do along the way to better yourself, and you can end up either as an HOD, as a principal, you can move on, you can even do your master's, and you go on to work for the ministry as a, a, a directorate for one of the regions. So the potential to earn money in any occupation is there. You just have to have a plan in place. So now we've thought of our potential salary. Now we need to look at job prospects. Last year, we had close to a thousand something law graduates from the University of Namibia. Where do you think all 1,000 of these law graduates are going to get a job? We don't have enough criminals in the country. So where do you think they're going to get a job? How many teacher graduates did we have uh, last year? Where's Angela? We had in the thousands. Where are all these people going to teach? We don't have enough schools. The nurses, don't get me started on nursing. Thousands of nurses. In which hospital and clinics are these nurses going to work? I'm not saying this to dissuade you. 
I'm telling you that when you are choosing your career, look at Namibia for what it is. We have a lot of doctors. We have a lot of uh, nurses. We have a lot of teachers. We have a lot of lawyers. Where is the space that speaks to my passions? We don't have a lot of, let's say, boiler makers, for instance. So that could be an option for you because this means it's easier to find a job. We don't have a lot of people who study forensics in the country. We don't have a lot of people who work in agriculture because a lot of our farmers are uneducated. But you can make a career out of being an agricultural econom economist, for instance. We don't have a lot of people who do veterinary-related courses. You can do veterinary medicine, for instance. So when you are choosing your career, also look, where is their space? Are we together? Because if you don't, and you end up being a group, part of a group of 5,000 students that have graduated education, you're going to be at home depressed because now we were told if I get an education, I'm going to get a job, but that's not how it works. You got the education for yourself and to serve your country. How you serve a country depends on the amount of effort you put in to see where it is you can fill up space. Are we together? Are, are you guys okay? I don't want to scare you too much, but I also want you to know exactly what is happening so you are prepared. So now we've looked at our job prospects. Very important, up next, educational costs. You need to look at how much it will cost for you to become what you want to become. Courses do not cost the same. There are some things that are more expensive at NAS than they are at UNAM. There are some things that are more expensive at UNAM than they are at IUM. Look at your costs. Obviously, as an alumni of the institution and as a staff member, I will always tell you to choose UNAM because, I mean, duh. But be very realistic about your costs. Not everyone is going to be able to get a, a, a NESPAF loan. Not everybody is going to be able to get a bursary. If you are, your schools or your study is being paid for by your parents, you and your parents need to sit and have an honest conversation about, if I want to do medicine, and per semester or per year, it's going to cost me around $70,000 a year. You need to have that conversation with your parents this year already, so that you give them an opportunity to prepare and save. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because a lot of the times you end up deciding at the last minute, you go to registration, you find out your school fees for the semester is 30000 At registration, you must already pay half, which means you must have about $20,000 just for registration in the semester. You register in January. Who has $30,000 in January? So start having these conversations with your parents already. If you want to go study abroad and you're not sure if you're going to get a scholarship, make sure that you have that conversation with your parents. They will guide you and they'll tell you what they're able to afford, what they're not able to afford. All right. Then two remaining things. One, your resources at home and school. If you live in conditions, and we don't all come from the same type of homes, sometimes we live in houses where we have so many siblings, and there are five of us sharing one room, there's no computer at home, electricity and water is scarce, then maybe one of the things you need to consider is also looking at getting accommodation on campus. Because then it saves you on taxi money, it saves you on electricity and water, and it saves you on having access to computers and so forth. So those are some of the things that you must also look into when you are deciding what your career path is, and eventually when you're going to apply. Last but not least, learning uh, opportunities on campus. What other things can you do on the side to complement what it is you are doing? If you are a law student, Register at the University of Namibia. One of the activities that you can take up is joining the debating society, for instance. That assists you in your studies as you go. If you're doing accounting, the university has an accounting society. That will greatly assist you in your studies as you go. If you are, let's say, studying sports management, joining the sports society, for instance, that will assist you as you go. Doing something as participating in the SRC and getting a portfolio, it goes a long way, not only in your development, in your academic career, but remember your social career also needs to develop. Because now you're in university, there's nobody there to hold your hand. Nobody's gonna remind you to go to class, nobody's gonna remind you to do your assignments. Your results are dependent on how it is you do your work. But this is also the stage in your life where now you're also discovering what vodka and tequila is, you're now also discovering what it means to wear, uh, what, what do you call these? Hey mama skirts, what? Mini skirts. 
and, and, and cleavage and things. This is where we now discover also that, oh, this is what a boyfriend is. This is what a girlfriend is. A lot of you are going to become sexually active in university as well. And so all of this is happening and you're trying to figure all of this out and you must still pass. You get. So you must have a balance. And you have to start establishing that balance now. Because in university, it's a different ball game. And if you're not careful, if you don't know who you are, if you don't know where you come from, if you don't know why you are at university, you're going to fail. And there's nothing worse than watching your friends move over to the next year and you are left behind. And then you discover your friends are graduating and they're all wearing gowns and you still have to go to class. So don't get left behind because you're making bad decisions along the way. But it depends on your values and your morals that we spoke about earlier. Now, before we, I, I do conclude my speech, I want to walk you guys through the application process and your options because I think this is a very important part of the conversation. First and foremost, we have 12 campuses. You guys are aware, right? So UNAM doesn't only have campuses in Vintuk, we have 12. The 12 campuses are as follows. You have the main campus, which is our headquarter campus in Pineys Park in town. Majority of our courses are offered there. Then you have the Komasdal campus. That's the one where we are right now. This is also informally known as our education campus. So in other words, if you're going to study education, this is, this is where you're coming. If you don't go to another campus out of town. Are we together? Then we have what we call our Hagigengop campus. It's unofficially known as our School of Medicine, but it's actually the Hagigengop campus. It's the one just there by the, the cancer center near Friedels, ne? You know where the campus is. So that's the Hagigengop campus. That's where you have your dentistry, your medicine, your physiotherapy, your occupational therapy. Those courses, they are offered there. Then we have the New Dam campus. The New Dam campus is on your way to the Hosea Kutako airport, just a couple of kilometers outside of Ventuk. If you're going to study agriculture, majority of the agriculture-related courses are offered at New Dam. Then we have the Jose Eduardo Dos Santos campus. No, that, that cannot impress you because you know that was a former president of Angola, right? Oh, okay. I'm just making sure. So the Jose Eduardo Dos Santos campus is also known as JETS. JETS is in Ongwediva. That is our engineering campus. So if you're going to study engineering, Jeihan Ongwediva too. Yes. Then we have the Oshakati campus. This is in Oshakati in itself, in town. It's a beautiful campus. Most uh, education, nursing, law. We have quite a number of courses that are offered there. Hifike Punye Pohamba campus is in Ongwediva. It's also known as HP campus. Also, a majority of courses offered there as well. Then we have our Katima Mulilo campus, all the way in Katima Mulilo. We have our Rundu campus, all the way in Rundu. Then we have our Orongo campus. It's just outside of Oshakati. Then we have our Sam Nioma campus. Sam Nioma campus is in, does anybody know? No, it's not in Enana. <laughs> it's not in Enana. Our Sam Nioma campus is also known as our uh, Aquatic Sciences campus. It's in Hentis Bay. So if you want to do Aquatic Sciences or fisheries, you're going to Hentis Bay. And then last but not least, of course, Seder Mark Frieda, we have our southern campus in Kietman Swap. So you have options. All of our campuses outside of Vintuk have accommodation. I think all of our campuses actually have accommodation. But because accommodation is sparse, it's also important that you apply sooner rather than later. Those are our campuses. Now, what are the courses that UNAM offers? We have four faculties. Please pay attention to what I'm going to say now so that you know which faculty you belong to, right? Or you have interest in. We have four faculties, but each faculty has schools under it. So the first one is the Faculty of Agriculture, Engineering, and Natural Sciences. What are the schools under this faculty? You have the School of Agriculture and Fisheries, the School of Engineering and Built Environment, School of Military Science, and the School of Science. So that's under the Faculty of Agriculture, Engineering, and Natural Sciences. Then we have the Faculty of Commerce, Management, and Law. Under this faculty, you have the School of Accounting, 
You have the School of Business Management and Governance. You have the School of Economics, Law, the Namibia Business School, and the School of Diplomatic Studies. Then we have the Faculty of Education and Human Sciences. The schools under here are only two. You have the School of Education, then you have the School of Humanities, Society, and Development. Last but not least, you have the Faculty of Health Sciences and Veterinary Medicine. This one has a lot of schools. The School of Allied Health, Dentistry, Medicine, Nursing, Pharmacy, Veterinary Medicine. So when you go on our website, when you start doing our, or your research for application for next year, please remember that even though you choose a specific faculty, under that faculty, there are a lot of different schools. Go through each school if you are not sure of what you want to do. Okay, how does application work? Majority, if not all applications, are done online. Okay? which means you have to have access to a computer. Obviously, if next year, if the time comes, you don't have access to a computer, the UNAM library is always open. You go to the UNAM library, they will assist you in being able to apply. Don't wait for the last minute to apply. There are some courses that have a limited amount of space. Now, if you wait until the very last day to apply, by then, the possibility of them already having filled out those spaces is quite large. So always choose to apply as soon as you can. You use your first semester mock results to apply next year. Now, here's the gag. And I know you guys are grade 11, eh? You guys are grade 12. So you are actually supposed to be applying now. Have you applied? Let me see by a show of hands, how many of you have applied? Ah. ah. The rest of you are waiting for what? Then? Okay, grade 11s and grade 10s aside, but the grade 12s, those of you who are here, I want all of you who are grade 12, raise your hands. If you are grade 12, raise your hands. Okay, out of you guys who have raised your hands, how many of you have applied? Yeah, that's a problem. Because what are the rest of you waiting for? Why have you guys not applied yet? Because early application is closed. You do know that, right? Yeah, so now we're in late application. But late application is only open until the 2nd of October. So you only have two weeks to make sure that you apply. We're going to be at the Vintuk Showgrounds starting this Friday. We will be accepting manual application forms at the Vintuk Showgrounds only. So if you have an opportunity and maybe you don't have access to a computer or whatever, come to the showgrounds and come hand in your application there. Are we together? And tell your other grade 12 friends. Ne? Also, to the grade 11s, UNAM does not take grade 11s for degree courses. I know that the curriculum has changed and that you can exit or to a high school at grade 11. As a university, we are asking you guys to please prioritize doing grade 12. It makes your life so much simpler. Because with grade 11, all that you can do is either a certificate or diploma program at UNAM. You can't do a degree. Because to do a degree, you must have AS subjects. If you do a certificate or diploma, now you do a certificate one year. Then you use the certificate to apply for the diploma two additional years. So that's three years you've done. Then you use the diploma to apply for the degree, and that's another four years. Something you can do in four years takes you eight. Because you didn't do grade 12. You need to have a minimum of two AA subjects. So do those subjects. And you don't have to be at a school. If you exit, you can apply to do your AA subjects at Namco. They actually have some of the best AS instructors in the country. Do your AS subjects, it will save you a lot of problems down the road. I know we're all happy, oh, I get to leave high school at 17. There's nothing great about that. And there's so many 17-year-olds on the street now because they didn't do their AS. Are we together, grade 11s? Grade 10s, set your academic goals now. If you want to go and study medicine, you must make it a habit to get A's and B's in your science subjects now. For the grade 12s, it's, it's, it's a big lot. Yeah, you have one more exam to go. And remember, when you apply with your first semester results, ne? and you get provisional admission, you still need to pass and meet the requirements for your faculty with the last semester. 
A lot of students make that mistake because you got the acceptance, you think that's it. I've made it into the faculty, I can fail my last exam. No, you can't. If you fail, we will give your space away to someone else. So you must still continue maintaining your marks, even now. Are we together? Last but not least, if you find yourself in a position, especially the grade 12s, next year you, maybe you didn't get space this year, but you see your last semester marks improved greatly and you meet the requirement for a course that you're interested in. We have what we call late registration period during registration, January next year. Come and make a turn and see if there is space in your faculty because not everybody who gets acceptance shows up to register. Are we together? Now, I've, I've given you guys a lot of information and I know it can be overwhelming, but there are just three things I want you to remember. One, prioritize your academic career. There's nothing in Namibia that you can do without having an education, unfortunately. Even our artists have degrees now. Even our soccer players have full-time jobs in the banks and financial sector. Ne? Even our actors have full-time jobs at psychology practices and things. You need to get an education. There's no way around it. Number two, make it a point to put in place habits that help you along the way. Your extramural activities, you guys keep using your phones for just Facebook and Instagram and what, but there's so many things that you can do on the internet that can help you greatly. Three, prioritize your mental health. You guys are also part of a very special group because so many things changed while you guys were in high school. So it's going to be a bit different and difficult for you guys in university. So already make it a habit to prioritize your mental health. Work on yourselves. Speak out if you need help. Remember where it is you come from. Have your goals in place so that that jungle that we call university life does not veer you off course. Last but not least, I am looking forward to seeing you guys next year and the rest of you in the years to come. Studying at the University of Namibia is one of the best things that will ever happen to you. We have such a dynamic and exceptional, academically thriving culture at UNAM. And it's a very, very great family to be a part of. It gives you many opportunities. And I don't want to hate on the other institutions, but I mean, the first lady does come from UNAM. Yeah, lawyers like Sisa Namanje come from UNAM. You know, yeah. The president also has an honorary degree from UNAM, you know. Other universities can't really say the same. Yeah, you know. Artists come from UNAM, you know. Yes, even the delicious and Marianne Bembes that you guys like, they come from UNAM. So we don't only give you a career, we can make you a celebrity also. So always choose the University of Namibia. I wish you guys the best of luck. Please remember, if you struggle to find what it is you want to study, if you go on Google, type in aptitude test. Do you guys know what an aptitude test is? Yeah. Go on Google, type aptitude test. It's a test that you can take. It asks you a bunch of general knowledge questions. And then at the end, after you finish taking the test, it'll tell you, okay, you are an agriculture person. You are an engineering person. You are an arts person. You're a media person. It helps narrow down your choices because I know it can be overwhelming choosing what to study. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the University Career Expo. All right, we will continue then with our program. Next on, we will have our other solo artists after our next speaker. So we have a very important um, guest on the program, which is uh, one of our partners from the Namibian Media Holdings. And they are the ones that have, um, gonna have the corporate presentations tomorrow and um, they are the, also the ones that is taking this, um, what do you call it, the coverage of this uh, event. So, Ms. Wetumweni Shikake, the names, please welcome her. And she is also gonna inform you about the announcement that I wanted to make early. Uh, what is it that you can, what is the competition all about and how you can um, 
take part in this competition. Ms. Wetu, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Like, like you're busy with paper here. I must say, nah, you guys are impressive. But anyways, good morning to you all. Good morning to the protocol that was observed. Uh, my name is Wetu Mwene. You can call me Wetu or Shay. I like to be called Shay. You know. <laughs> okay, so anyways, I'm here today to tell you guys a bit, a bit about um, what Namibia Media Holdings is here to do in partnership with UNAM, right? So to start off with, uh, I mentioned my name to you guys. You guys do know that I work for MyZone, which is this beautiful logo on my left. So if you don't know about MyZone already, I think you're sleeping. You're sleeping on us. You're sleeping on yourself, actually. Ne? Do you know about MyZone? Yeah. Who knows about MyZone? Your school newspaper project? You don't have a school newspaper. Do you know about it? Okay. Either ways, I'm going to share some of the insights that I have with you guys, um, seeing from where I work and what exactly I do. So I do work with a lot of corporate people. I work with a lot of career profiles. I do corporate and career profiles of different individuals, and I get to learn about what they do every single day. So that's normal for me. I get to learn about doctors. I learn about lawyers. I learn about uh, bi biologists. And different inspiring careers that you guys can also learn from. So that's why I'm so happy to be here today and speak to you about some of the things that excite me, which is career development, right? Okay, so I think um, Ms. Angela also mentioned that we have partnered with UNAM this year for this UNAM Career Open Day. That is because we think or we take careers as an important subject to be spoken about, to be addressed. Ms. Josie earlier spoke about the realities that we do face as youth. You know, finding a job is not easy. That's a fact in Namibia, no? We all know that. Okay. So career development for youth can be seen as a two-way street. First, there's these experts that are sharing with you what they do. They tell you what they've done to get to the positions they're in. But then on the receiving end, there's you, us, the youth of Namibia. Making a difference in our own lives requires us to take the information they give us, ne? to learn from it, to grasp everything that they teach us in order for us to also excel and become better career individuals, right? So when different entities collaborate and are committed to aid and support career advancement and development such as this uh, career fair, we highlight the importance of projects and initiatives to be worked on, right? Now more than ever, it's very important for corporates, different companies to come together, universities to come together, students, learners to come together to learn about different careers and opportunities that they are for them. I think you can attest to it, and that's why you're here today. Okay, then. It lies within your hands, the youth, once again, to make use of career development opportunities. So as fun as it can be, I also remember the times when I was in high school. It was not too long ago. <laughs> but anyways, the times when I was in high school, you know, would, would be so happy to leave school because you know you're not having math that morning, you're not having English, you're not having biology or whatever it is. But don't take this opportunity just as such. Take it as a learning opportunity for you to get to learn about different things that you are interested in. Okay. Um, additionally to that, I think uh, coming to career fairs is quite important as you go around the different exhibitions that are here or the different people that will be speaking about their faculties from UNAM. I think sharing your interests with them can help, th can help them to guide you. So if you tell them that you're interested in geography or you're interested in this and this subject, maybe they can direct you to study geology. That is an example, right? So share your interest with them. Tell them what you like to do, what subjects interest you. Tell them about what excites you um, when it comes to careers. Okay. So it's also important to make use of these opportunities to learn as much as you can and gravitate towards what interests you. That's what I just mentioned. One way to know if a faculty here is really what you're looking to tap into is also uh, something that was spoken about by Ms. Josie. 
you should have an interest in something that you're willing to pursue. So if you have an interest in geology, which is the example at the top of my head right now, you should take it upon yourself to visit different companies and people that can help you, right? Okay. So tomorrow uh, we have an exciting event as well. There is going to be a Careers VX. Now, the Careers VX is a, is a project that Namibia Media Holdings, the youth brand, My Zone, will facilitate. So there's different companies, different corporates that will come there. These are experts in their own fields. And they'll come speak to you about their offerings for high school learners, for students at UNAM, for students at NAS, whatever it is that you're interested in, they will be ready to answer your questions. So the venue is on the other side of the campus. You'll be directed if you're here tomorrow as well. And you can you know, get in, learn about banking, learn about accounting, learn about finance, whatever it is, health, anything, right? And I think it's also quite important to mention that when we approach different companies or entities to you know, work with us or to give us insights, you should ask questions that are going to profit you. Not necessarily questions to make fun of people or you know, trying to be funny. Those things can be left for other times. But take it as a serious learning opportunity. Okay, so the theme for the Career VX this year is penetrating the job market. So penetrating the job market, like I mentioned earlier, getting a job is not easy. And that's just a fact. We live in Namibia and jobs are not easy to maintain or even to get in the first place. Okay, so the theme of penetrating the job market was uh, motivated by what I just mentioned. And I think this fact is quite alarming and we need to address it. So at the Career VX, we also learn from different experts in their fields as entrepreneurs that, are, that have also come to share their stories. So if you're not able to get a job, there is an alternative for you. And you can start your own business, you can start your own um, enterprise that you can create employment for your peers or for those that are around you, okay? So additional to that, there are, or there is a competition that we've come up with, MyZone. So if you are intending to study at UNAM, I didn't see the hands that were, that were raised earlier <laughs> for those that want to study at UNAM, but quickly show me, who has applied to UNAM already? Okay, it's giving five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so you guys, there's a competition for you guys, right? There is a number that I want you to remember or to save onto your phones to start off with. So take notes. So it's 085 78 56 231. I'll, I'll say it again. So 085 78 56 231. Should I say it again? Okay, 085, the last time, 085 78 56 231. Yes. So, on to that number, you go onto your WhatsApp. You know, we are all on WhatsApp these days. If you are texting me offline to me, I don't have Wi Fi, I don't have credit, like, I'm not going to respond. So, text onto this number, hashtag careervx. Careervx, hashtag. C A R E E R V X. Okay, I'll say it again. To this number on WhatsApp, ne? you text hashtag all together, hashtag C A R E E R V X. Okay, so that will allow you guys to win $5,000 worth of registration for the first semester at UNAM. So that means we will be covering your registration fees with UNAM for the first semester in 2024. So if you're interested, please do follow MyZone on social media. Those that are familiar with MyZone and know about the school newspaper project, you're welcome to do so and join the competition for your lucky giveaway, if we can call it that. It's a small giveaway, but I think it will make a difference for you guys that are intending to study at UNAM. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Wetu. 
I hope you wrote down those numbers. It's a great opportunity for you to get that financial, you know, support if you are then um, successful to register next year uh, at the University of Namibia. So thank you very much. And also to introduce the program that we will have for tomorrow. All right, so we are moving. Are we together? Yes? Ngayawa. <laughs> yes, our singer is, a, it's a surprise, ne? so we are keeping you there for the last. All right. Um, we should call now Mr. Christos Katire. We have come to the end of actually our first half of the program because <laughs> we want you first, we want you after this to go to the different um, tables that are there to get information. These tables are representing the different faculties that was just mentioned by Ms. Josie. So um, we will direct you how we will do it. So please do visit the table so that you can get the information that you need. Mr. Christus, the floor is yours. Please give a hand of applause to Mr. Christus, and after that, we will have our singer. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Ms. Naubes. Uh, good morning to all the staff members. Good morning to all the exhibitors. Good morning to our guests. Uh, good morning to our students. Good morning to you, learners. Um, as I was sitting there, I remember that um, I also underwent uh, through a similar situation like uh, uh, Ms. Josie and, and our Vice President. Because when I, uh, I registered through late registration at NAST, that's where I studied, and I initially wanted to do engineering because I, I had the science field in grade 12. But then I couldn't uh, qualify. I remember very well I had a friend of mine. His name was Pius. And uh, we got letters that we are not accepted for engineering. Therefore, we can come and try at uh, late registration. And uh, we woke up quite very early. It was around 5 o'clock. We went there, and there was a long queue already. Some people had already slept there. Um, but then the only spaces or the only programs that had spaces, one of them was human resources management. Um, we knew nothing about what human resources management. It was human resources management, business administration. Um, I think there was also commerce, marketing, and so on. But we knew nothing uh, about many of these things. So we decided to choose human resources management because it's going with human. I think this one was better because there is a human element to it. And we registered for human resources management. And when I started at the Ministry of Finance as a human resources officer, there was, it, it, it's a career with a lot of administrative you know, uh, duties. You need to file leaves, you need to compile minutes, and all these things. It, it was a lot of administrative to me. So I had to now change careers. I became a labor inspector, but with the labor inspector, there is always a line. It's like you are at the clinic. You are always having arguments. This employee was fired, this person fired me unfairly, did not pay me, you need to solve out labor cases every now and then. So I decided, uh, let me just apply to the University of Namibia. There was this position, and uh, I am now a student support officer here at Komazal campus. They also refer to us as a student leadership development officer. So I did spend time, you know, I studied something else, and I'm now doing something else. So ladies and gentlemen, or dear learners, what I'm trying to say is that this, as Dr. Tommy said, or Mr. Tommy said, this is the perfect time to ignite your thinking. 
to make sure that you get information so that you make informed decisions. So I just thought I should share that, share that with you. And uh, uh, my task is just to really appreciate and give a word of gratitude to every one of us. I want to start by really appreciating and thanking our Lord Almighty, you know, who made this day possible. And then, of course, Mr. Brickman, thank you very much for, you know, blessing and opening our day. Also, Mr. Tatatomi, uh, we am used to Tatatomi, unfortunately. So, Mr. Awanga, thank you very much for uh, those wise words that came from you. I really picked up the igniting part. This is where you ignite. You, you, get, you get it hot so that you know exactly what you would want. Uh, Madam Vice President, thank you. You know, we are having quite a number of uh, uh, ladies here. I think the, the, the female population is a lot, and uh, it speaks to us having a leader of a lady. You know, we want women to get empowered all the time. So thank you very much also to Madam Josie. Uh, it was quite very thorough. I think she gave you all the information she need. I mean, you guys need. She was, she was really thorough. You know, uh, we were just talking now to remind you that when you are going to apply, those who never applied or who didn't apply yet, there is an application fee of $150. All right? She clearly stated that the due date for application is uh, the 2nd of October. Ne? But before you apply, you must go to the bank or to any ATM. You deposit an amount of $150. The deposit slip, you make a copy of it, and you attach it alongside your documents. All right? For those who applied without paying, there is still time to do that. You can still go and pay the 150, and then you still come and attach your proof of payment uh, on your portal when you open on the system. So we just needed to also just to mention that. Um, Madam Wetumwene, thank you very much from uh, Namibia Media Holdings. Thanks for being with us throughout, from the planning to where we are now. We've been together and we appreciate you. Thank you, thank you very much. We also want to really appreciate the Corporate Engagement and International Relations Department. We really appreciate them. We want to uh, appreciate all the teachers who are present here from all the different schools who came and accompanied their learners. Thank you very much. Your contribution to the Namibian child is always visible, and we highly appreciate that. I lastly want to appreciate all of you. Please give yourself a round of applause, dear Lenas. <laughs> Let me also not forget to appreciate Namibia Media Holdings. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being partners with us. We are definitely going to maintain the relationship and we are going to be together. Having said that, uh, thanks to everyone, members of the media, thank you all and have a blessed day ahead. Thank you.